Hey, hi to all. Um, we'll continue reading. So, the roads of administration of the drugs. And, and for now it's the uh, systematic effect. Oral administration of drugs is safer and more convenient for the patient than injection. There are two main mechanisms of drug absorption by the gut. Uh -huh. That's interesting. So, two main mechanisms of drug absorption by the gut. Passive diffusion. This is the most important mechanism. Non-polar lipid-soluble agents are well absorbed from the gut, mainly from the small intestine because of the enormous absorptive surface area provided by the villi and microvilli. Active transport. This requires a specific carrier. Naturally occurring polar substances including sugars, amino acids and vitamins are absorbed by active or facilitated transport mechanism. Mm -hmm. Drugs that are analogous Analogs. Drugs that are analogs of such molecules compete with them for transport via the carrier. Mm -hmm. So, once again, the active transport, this requires a specific carrier. Uh -huh. Well, it's obvious that if there is a specific carrier inside of the organism, this carrier is designed not to carry the drug because the, the organism uh, like it meets the drug like first time in life. No, no, not the first time, but evolutionary, it wasn't designed to carry certain drug. But many drugs are analogs to those kind of molecules which are carried by the carriers. And probably because of, uh, so they are made like analogs, analog, analogs to uh, these molecules because uh, it should be possible to carry those drugs. So this requires a specific carrier, naturally occurring polar substances including sugars, amino acids, and vitamins are absorbed by active or facilitated transport mechanism. Drugs that are analogs of such molecules compete with them for transport via the carrier. Examples include L-DOPA, methotrexate, 5, fluorouracil, and lithium, which compete with the sodium ions for the absorption. Other factors that influence absorption include surgical interference with gastric function. Gastrectomy reduces absorption of several drugs. Disease of the gastrointestinal tract. Example, coliac disease, cystic fibrosis. The effect of such di di disease are unpredictable but often surprisingly minor. Hmm. Disease. How is pronounced? Disease? Disease. Disease. And the presence of food. Uh, the timing of drug administration in relation to meal times can be important. Food and drink dilute the drug and can bind it. Alter gastric emptying and increase mesenteric and portal blood flow. Mm -hmm. So, two ways. Passive diffusion of a water-soluble drug through an aqueous channel or pore. Aqueous channel or pore, so that's a passive diffusion. And passive diffusion of a lipid-soluble drug. Passive diffusion of a lipid-soluble drug. Lumen, epithelial cell membrane, 
carrier mediated active transport of drug. Modes of absorption of drugs from the gut. Modes of absorption of drugs from the gut. Then the drug metabolism by intestinal flora. This may affect drug absorption, alteration of bowel flora. Example by concomitant use of antibiotics. Antibiotics. Once again, this may affect drug absorption, alteration of bowel flora example by concomitant use of antibiotics can interrupt enterohepatic recycling and cause loss of efficiency of oral contraceptives. So oral contraceptives, the efficiency of oral contraceptives can be decreased uh, by the concomitant usage of anti antibiotics. Uh, Let's check once again. So, drug metabolism by intestinal flora. This might affect drug absorption, alteration of bowel flora, example by concomitant use of antibi antibiotics. Oh. Alteration of bowel flora. So, the. <laughs> I misunderstood. So not the bowel flora alterates the drug, but in this case, yeah, the antibiotics, they alterate the bowel flora that interrupts enterohepatic recycling and cause loss of efficiency of oral contraceptives. Enterohepatic recycling. I don't know. I'm not complete I don't completely uh, understand for now what is enterohepatic enterohepatic recycling uh, and how it deals with the uh, bowel flora maybe let's check what is enterohepatic recycling Broadly speaking, enterohepatic recycling and enterohepatic circulation involve the circulation of metabolized and non-metabolized compounds, including physiologic compounds and xenobiotics, between the intestine and the liver. So they actually circulate some xenobiotics and some endogenous substances bile acids can be reabsorbed after they are ah, that thing I know that they are uh, reabsorbed from the uh, gaster so uh, okay reabsorbed after the emulation into the intestine by the liver entering the enterohepatic cycle once again reabsorbed after the elimination into the intestine by the liver reabsorbed by the liver entering the enterohepatic cycle. Enterohepatic circulation can be regarded as the phenomenon of the transport chemical compounds from the liver to the bile, which eventually drains into intestine and is followed by reabsorption and then back into the liver. So, okay, the substance circulates to the intestine to the liver, to the intestine to the liver. For now it's clear and causes loss of efficiency of oral contraceptives. Chapter 13. Mm -hmm. That's good that everything will be discussed in more details in further chapters. Drug metabolism by enzymes. Cytochrome P450 family 3A CYP3A in gastrointestinal epithelium, chapter 5. Okay, I'm waiting for chapter 5 because it's not clear at all for me. So, drug metabolism by enzymes, by cytochrome 
and buy this CYP3A. Drug Flux. Back into the gut lumen by drug transport proteins. Prolonged action and sustained release preparations. Okay, prolonged action, prolonged action and sustained release preparations. Some drugs with a short elimination half-life half -life need to be administered frequently at inconveniently short intervals, making adherence to the prescribed regimen difficult for the patients. What's adherence? Adherence. Adherence. Adherence to the prescribed regime difficult for the patient. A drug with similar action but a longer half-life may need to be substituted. Alternatively, there are various pharmaceutical means of slowing absorption of a rapidly eliminated drug. The aim of such sustained release preparations is to release a steady infusion of drug into the gut lumen for absorption during transi transit through the small intestine. Once again, alternatively, there are various pharmaceutical means of slowing absorption of a rapidly eliminated drug. Uh -huh. The aim of such sustained release preparations is to release a steady infusion of drug into the gut lumen for absorption during transit through the small intestine. Reduced dosing frequency may reduce dosing frequency may improve compliance in the case of some drugs. Example carbamazepine. How is it pronounced? Carbamazepine. Carbamazepine. Reduce adverse effects linked to high peak plasma concentration. Uh -huh. I actually do so with many drugs. If the patient is hypersensitive to the some drug, sometimes with the antidepressants, you just uh, give the um, drug in smaller doses but more frequently, like not one pill in the morning, but uh, like uh, one fourth, like quarter of the pill every six hours or every four hours. It may be not very convenient, but in the same time it makes uh, less side effects. And if the side effects are really, uh, if the side effects are very aversive, I would say, not pleasant for the sub for the patient. I mean, it's probably w worth doing. But that's only one example. Reduce adverse effects linked to high peak plasma concentration. Absorption of such preparations is often incomplete, so it is especially important that bioavailability is established and substitution of one preparation for another may lead to clinical problems. Other limitations of slow release preparations are okay, transit time through the small intestine. Transit. 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 Transit time through the small intestine is about six hours it's about six hours so once daily dosing may lead to unacceptably low through concentrations once again transit time through the small intestine is about six hours so once daily dosing may lead to unacceptably low through concentrations yeah because it's absorbed during six hours if the gut lumen is narrowed or intestinal transit is slow, as in the elderly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
actually uh, the concentration of drug in blood can be made even lower than it should be in elderly patients because their intestinal transit is slower and the absorption of the drug is also prolonged or due to other drugs thoracyclic antidepressants opiates thoracyclic antidepressants they slower uh, the intestinal transit oh my god I didn't know that I should probably the thoracyclic antidepressants this making the uh, intestinal transit slower. There is a danger of high local drug concentrations causing causal damage. There is a danger of high local drug there is a danger of high local drug concentration causing the causal damage. There is a danger of high local drug concentrations causing the causal damage. Ah other way around. So if the intestinal transit is slow so the, the drug may stay in certain local region for a long time which can cause the mucosal damage osmosin an osmotically released formulation of indomethacin had to be withdrawn because it caused bleeding and ulceration in the small intestine uh -huh. What is indomethacin? I've forgotten. Like antibiotic? No. Of course, anti inflammatory drug. It had to be withdrawn because it caused bleeding and ulceration of the small intestine. Overdose with the small sustained release preparations is difficult to treat because of delayed drug absorption. Mm -hmm. I see. Sustained release tablets should not be divided. Ah, this is also understood. Some, uh, as uh, written previously, sometimes they are in the special capsule, which is. Uh, mm, I forgot, not, not damaged, but which is taken off or diluted in certain region of the intestine. Oh, okay, expense. So, uh, limitation of slow release preparations. Okay. So, those were limitations of slow release preparations. I, nothing very uh, complicated here, I think. Buccal and sublingual road. Drugs are administered to be retained in the mouth for local disorders of the pharynx or buccal mucose, such as Aphthodus ulcerus. Aphthodus ulcerus. How, how can it be? Aphthodus ulcers. Aphthes ulcers. Aphthes ulcers. Aphthes ulcers. Hydrocortisone lozenges or carbenoxolone granules. Okay, so those drugs they can cause those ulcers actually in their mouth. Sublingual administration has distinct advantages over oral administration. Sublingual. The drug to be swallowed. For drugs with the uh -huh. oral administration is a drug to be swallowed, the sublingual is not to be swallowed. For drugs with pronounced prosystemic metabolism, providing direct and rapid access to the systemic circulation, by passing the intestine and liver. Glyceric, prenitrate, buprenorphine and fentanyl are given sublingually for this reason. 
once again for drugs with pronounced presystemic metabolism I'm not sure what is presystemic metabolism providing direct and rapid access to the systemic circulation I think presystemic metabolism is the metabolism inside the gastrointestinal tract they go at once to the systemic circulation after the sublingual administration by passing the intestine and liver glyceryl trinitrate buprenorphine and fentanyl are given fentanyl fentanyl are given sublingually for this reason glyceryl trinitrate is taken either as a sublingual tablet or as a spray Sublingual administration provides short-term effects, which can be terminated by swallowing the tablet. Tablets for the buccal absorption provide more sustained plasma concentration and are held in one spot between the lip and the gum until they have dissolved. Once again, tablets for buccal absorption provide more sustained plasma concentration and are held in one spot between the lip and the gum until they have dissolved. Rectal road. Drugs may be given rectally for local effects. Example to treat proctitis. The following advantages have been claimed for the rectal road of administration of systematically active drugs. Exposure to the acidity of the gastric juice and to digestive enzymes is avoided. Exposure to the acidity of the gastric juice and to digestive enzymes is avoided. No, that's good. The portal circulation is partly bypassed, reducing presystemic first pass metabolism for patients who are unable to swallow or who are vomiting. Rectal diazepam is useful for controlling status epilepticus in children. That's something valuable. Metronidazole is well absorbed when administered rectally and is less expensive than intravenous preparations. However, there are usually more reliable alternatives and drugs that are given rectally can cause severe local irritation. Skin. Uh, what is, so, buccal road, uh, then uh, skin, lungs, intramuscular injections, nose, eye, ear and vagina. Interesting that they decided to, uh, like, Describe it together. Subcutaneous injections, intravenous injections, then the case history. And what are the next? Drug metabolism. Drug metabolism is something interesting. Okay, let's proceed with the with the waves ways of the administration. Drugs are applied topically to treat skin disease, chapter 51. Uh, systematic absorption via the skin can, co sorry, can cause undesirable effects, for example, in the case of potent glucocosteroid, glucocorticosteroids. But the application of drug to skin can also be used to achieve a systematic therapeutic effect. Fentanyl patches for analgesia. Uh, the skin has evolved as an impermeable impermeable integument so the problems of getting drugs through it are completely different from transport through an absorptive surface such as the gut factors affecting precutaneous drugs absorption include skin condition injury and disease Age, infant skin is more permeable than adult skin. 
region plantar forms help scrotum posterior auricular skin hydration of the stratum corneum this is very important stratum corneum I, I've forgotten what is stratum corneum Uh, it's the layer stratum uh -huh. it's the upper layer of the skin actually this is very important increased hydration increased permeability plastic film occlusion sometimes employed by dermatologist increases hydration uh -huh. once again Increased hydration increases permeability. Plastic film occlusion, sometimes employed by dermatologists. What is plastic film occlusion? Increases hydration. Penetration of glucocorticosteroids is increased up to 100 fold, and systematic side effects are more common. Uh -huh. What is plastic film occlusion? If it's important and it increases the hydration, plastic film sounds like the movie made of plastic. Ah, this one. So actually, we can uh, apply the drug and then make the plastic film occlusion that will increase hydration. And in case of glucocorticosteroids, it will increase penetration up to 100 times. The hike, a little is known about the importance of the various substances which over the years have been empirically included in skin creams and ointments. The physical chemistry of these mixtures may be very complex and change during an application. Physical properties of the drug. Penetration increases with increase in lipid solubility. Reduction of particle size enhances absorption and solution penetrate best of all. Surface area to which the drug is applied. This is especially important when uh, treating infants who have a relatively large surface area to volume ratio. Uh, transdermal absorption is sufficiently reliable to enable systematically active drugs estradiol nicotine scopolamine to be administered by this road in the form of patches transdermal administration by passes for systematic metabolism patches are more expensive than alternative preparations Okay, lungs. Drugs, notably steroids, beta 2 adrenal receptor agonist and muscarinic receptor antagonist are inhaled as aerosols or particles for their local effects on bronchioles. Once again, drugs, notably steroids, beta adrenal receptor agonists and muscarinic receptor agonists are inhaled as aerosols or particles for their local effects on bronchioles. Uh -huh. Local effects on bronchioles, okay. Nebulized antibiotics are also sometimes used in children with cystic fibrosis and recurrent pseudomonas infections. Physical properties that limit system, systemic absorption are desirable. For example, for example, eprotopium is a quaternary ammonium ion analog of atropine, which is highly polar and is consequently poorly absorbed and has reduced atropine like side effects. Once again, nebulized antibiotics are also sometimes used in children with cystic fibrosis and recurrent pseudomonas infections. That's okay. Physical properties that limit system, systemic absorption are desirable. 
Why does it mean physical properties that limit systemic absorption are desirable? Okay, for example, eprotropium is a quaternary ammonium ion analog of atropine, which is highly polar. Okay, highly polar. And is consequently poorly absorbed and has reduced atropine like side effects. Mm -hmm. Ah, they mean the physical that limits systemic absorption, uh, for they want them to act just inside of the lungs, on the lung tissue, alveoli, tissue, and so, so on, bronchioles or something, lung tissue, lung structures of lungs, of respiratory system, better to say. Uh, so a physical property that it's uh, a highly polar and is consequently poorly absorbed. I'm not sure how the high polarity causes poor absorption. But maybe that's something to remember, that high polarity causes poor absorption and has reduced atropine-like side effects. A large fraction of an inhaled dose of salbutamol is in fact swallowed. Uh -huh. However, the bioavailability of swallowed salbutamol is low due to inactivation in the gut wall, so systemic effects such as tremor are minimized in comparison to effect uh, on the bronchioles. What is salbutamol? Beta blocker. Ah, not the bubble, agonist, not the back of much. Selective agonist. Selective agonist, probably it dilates the bronchioles. Oh, I forgot a lot of things, which I shouldn't probably. A large fraction of an inhaled dose of salbutamol is in fact swallowed. However, the bioavailability of swallowed salbutamol is low due to an activation in the gut wall, so systemic effects such as tremor are minimized in comparison to effects on the bronchioles. The lungs are ideally suited for absorption from the gas phase, since the total respiration surface area is about 60 meters square, square meters. Once again, the lungs are ideally suited, ideally or ideally? Ideally, I think. Ideally. Ideally. Ideally suited for absorption from the gas phase, since the total respiratory surface area is about 60 meters square, square meters, through which only 60 milliliters blood are percolating Picolating, picolating, percol, percolating, 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 percolating in the capillaries. I want to do what percolating transit uh -huh, into capillaries. This is exploited in the case of volatile anesthetics, as discussed in chapter 24. In nasal inhaled preparations of insulin was introduced for type 2 diabetes, but was not commercially successful. Uh, yeah, and the, I mean, nasal inhaled, but I if you have their, uh, yeah, 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 if you have like a flu or something else, it decreases uh, the absorption rate. And the insulin is such kind of drug that uh, you have to dose it, yes. Even for me, it, it sounds like weird shit. Okay, the next one is the nose. Glucocorticosteroids and sympathomimetic amines, 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 or amines. I mean the English spell. A means. A means. A means 
may be administered intranasally for their local effects on nasal mucus. Systematic absorption may result in undesirable side effects, undesirable effects such as hypertension. Nasal mucosal epithelium has remarkable absorptive properties, notably the capacity to absorb intact complex peptides that cannot be administered by mouth because they would be digested. Mm -hmm. This has opened up an area of therapeutic that were previously limited by the inconveniences of repeated injections. Drugs administered by the road include desmopressin, an analog of, of antidiuretic hormone, for diabetes insipidus and buzerolin, an analog of gonadotropin releasing hormone for prostate cancer, uh, i.e. and vagina. Drugs administered uh, topically to these sites for their local effects. Example, gentamicin or ciproploxacin eye drops for bacterial conjunctivities, for bacterial conjunctivities, sodium bicarbonate ear drops for softening wax, and nystatin pesaris for candida infections. Occasionally, they are absorbed in sufficient quantity to have undesirable systemic effects. Once again, occasionally they are absorbed in sufficient quantity to have undesirable systemic effects, such as worsening of bronchospasm in asthmatics. Occasionally they are absorbed in sufficient quantity to have undesirable systemic effects, such as worsening of bronchospasm in asthmatics. Mm -hmm. Caused by Timolol eye drops given for an open angle glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that this way administration through those ways potentially can cause more side effects than, for example, through the sublingual way. It seems strange for me, but however, such absorption is not sufficiently reliable to make use of these roads for therapeutic ends. Mm -hmm. So they can cause systematic. Uh, si uh, systematic effects which cause side effects they can lead to, to systematic like effects mainly but uh, which manifest manifestate mainly as a side effects but uh, the uh, systematic effect is not sufficient to use them as the therapeutic tools or therapeutic roads uh, for the systematic effect I hope you understood what I meant. Many drugs are well absorbed when administered intramuscularly. Yeah. The rate of absorption is increased when the solution is distributed uh, throughout a large volume of muscle. Dispersion is enhanced by message of the injection site. Transport away from the injection site is governed by muscle blood flow and this varies from side to side, deltoid, vastus lateralis, gluteus maximus. Blood flow to muscle is increased by exercise and absorption rates are increased in all sides after exercise. Conversely, shock, a heart failure or other condition that decrease muscle blood flow reduce absorption. If the uh, if the guy is, if the patient is unconscious or in coma, the intramuscular injections may be not the best way, but once again, it probably depends on the situation. The drug must be sufficiently water soluble to remain in solution at the injection site until absorption occurs. This is a problem for some drugs, including phenytoin, diazepam, and digoxin. As crystallization and or poor absorption occur when these are given by intramuscular injection, which should therefore be avoided. Slow absorption is useful in some slow absorption is useful in some circumstances where 
appreciable concentrations of drugs are required for prolonged period. Once again, how this word is spelled? Appreciable. Appreciable. Appreciable concentrations of drug are required for prolonged periods. Depot intramuscular injections are used to improve compliance in psychiatric patients. Example: the decanote ester of flufenazine, which is slowly hydrolyzed to release active free drug. That's three unknown and hardly pronounced words. Decanoate ester of fluffinazine. Decanoate ester of fluffinazine. Decanoate ester of fluffinazine. Which is slowly hydrolyzed to release active free drug. Intramuscular injection up but the pot intramuscular injection are used to improve compliance in psychiatric patients. Mm -hmm. So in general uh, they are used when we also need the prolonged uh, to have the prolonged effect. Intramuscular injections have a number of Disadvantages. Intramuscular injection has a number of disadvantages. Pain. Distension with large volumes is painful and injected volume should usually be no greater than 5 milliliters. Sciatic nerve palsy following injections into the buttock. Sciatic nerve palsy following injection to the buttock. This is avoided by injecting into the upper quarter gluteal quadrant. Sterile abscesses at the injection site. Paraldehyde. Paraldehyde. Elevated serum creatine phosphokinase due to enzyme release from muscle can cause diagnostic confusion. Elevated serum creatine phosphokinase due to the enzyme release from muscle can cause diagnostic confusion. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, if the patient is constantly, if the patient has the injections to the gluteus muscle, as I mean, it may decrease for phosphokinase, elevate serum creatine phosphokinase. Maybe severe adverse reactions may be severe adverse reactions may be protracted because there is no way of stopping absorption of the drug. Oh yeah, there is no way if it's in the muscle already and just slowly goes to the blood circulation circle, what can you do? For some drugs, intramuscular injection is less effective than the oral road. Probably hematoma formation. Mm -hmm. Then subcutaneous injection. This is influenced by the same factor that affects intramuscular injection. Cutaneous blood flow is cutaneous, cutaneous, or cutaneous, cutaneous. 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 Cutaneous blood flow is lower than in muscle, so absorption is lower. Absorption is related by immobilization reduced of blood flow by a Tonique. Absorption is related by mobilization, reduction of blood flow by tourniquet and local cooling. Adrenaline incorporated into an injection. Adrenaline incorporated into an injection, example of local anesthetics, reduces the absorption rate by causing vasoconstriction. Sustained effects from subcutaneous injections are extremely important clinically, most notably in the treatment of insulin-dependent diabetes. Mm -hmm. Different rates of absorption being achieved by different insulin preparations. 
sustained effects have also been obtained from subcutaneous injections by using oily suspensions or by implanting a pellet subcutaneously. Ostogen testosterone for hormone replacement therapy. Once again, sustained effects have also been obtained from subcutaneous injections by using oily suspensions or by implanting a pellet subcutaneously. Mm -hmm. Okay, intravenous injection. This has following advantages. Intrathecal, intratecalna. I've forgotten what is intrathecal injection. Ah, to the... I've never done those. This road provides access to the central nervous system for drugs that are normally excluded by the blood-brain barrier. This inevitably involves very high risk of neurotoxicity. Ah, oh, sorry, I haven't read about the independence injection. So the rapid action, morphine for analgesia or for semid in pulmonary edema. Breast systemic metabolism is avoided. Example, glyceryl nitrate infusions in patient with unstable angina. Intravenous injection is used for drugs that are not absorbed by mouth. Example, aminoglycosides, gentamicin and heparins. It is also used for the drugs that are too painful or toxic to be given intramuscularly. Cytotoxic drugs must not be allowed to leak from the vein or considerable local damage and pain will result as many of them as severe physicans. Example, vincristine, doxorubicin. What is vesicans? Mihorovi. Cytotoxic drugs, once again, must not be allowed to leak from the vein or considerable local damage and pain will, will result as many of them are severe vesicans. Ah, severe vesicans, they, can, the, 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 they will cause appearance of those kind of damage of the skin. Vincristine doxorubicin. Intravenous infusion is easily controlled, enabling precise titration of drug with short half-life. This is essential for drugs such as sodium nitroprusside and Epoprostenol. The main drawbacks of intravenous administration are as follows. Once injected, drugs cannot be recalled. High concentrations result if the drug is given too rapidly. The right heart received the highest concentration. Embolism of foreign particles or air, sepsis or thrombosis. Accidental extravascular injection or leakage of toxic drugs, produce severe local tissue necrosis, inadvertent intra-arterial injection can cause arterial spasm and peripheral gangrene. Okay, intratecal injection. This road provides access, access to the central nervous system for the drug to normally excluded by the blood-brain barrier. This inevitably involves a very high risk of neurotoxicity and this road should never be used without adequate training. In the UK, junior doctors who have made mistakes of this kind have been held criminally as well as professionally, ne professionally neglected.
Yeah. I mean, how can you do something like this if you're not sure? Negligent. Negligent. The possibility of causing death or permanent neurological disability is such that extra care must be taken in checking that both the drug and the dose are correct. Examples of drugs used in this way include methotrexate and local anesthetics, example uh, levobupivacaine or opiates such as morphine and fentanyl. More commonly, more commonly, anesthetic Dentists use the more commonly anesthetists. Anesthetists. Uh huh. Anesthetists. More commonly, anesthetists use the extra dural road. Extra dural road to administer local anesthetic drug to produce original analgesia without. Depressing respiration example in women during labor. Labor. Amino glycosides are sometimes administered by neurosurgeons via a cisternal reservoir. Cisternal reservoir. Neurosurgeon. Okay. How is it pronounced? Cisternal reservoir. Cisternal reservoir. Cisternal reservoir. To patients with gram negative infections of the brain, their antispasmodic. Baclofen is sometimes administered by this road. Okay, penicillin used to be administered intrathecally to patients with a pneumococcal meningitis. Okay, intrathecally is inside the dura mater. Drug that is normally excluded by the blood brain barrier. This inevitably involves very high risk of neurotoxicity. Intrathecal is where? Teacum. Rot administration of drugs via an injection to the spinal canal or into the subarachnoidoid space. Mm -hmm. uh, however, however, when the men meninges are inflamed, as in meningitis. Higher dose intravenous penicillin results in adequate concentration in the cerebrospinal fluid. Intravenous penicillin should now always be used for meningitis, since penicillin is a predictable neurotoxin. It was formerly used to produce an animal model of seizures. And seizures and and seizures and cephalopathy and deaths have been caused by injecting a dose intrathecally that would have been appropriate for intravenous administration. Key points. Oral. Generally safe and convenient. Buccal sublingual. Cir circumvents persystemic metabolism. Rectal. Useful in patients who are vomiting. Transdermal, limited utility, avoids persystemic metabolism. Lungs, volatile anesthetics. Mm -hmm. Volatile anesthetics. And what is just volatile? Mm-hmm.
nozzle useful absorption of some peptides intramuscular useful in some urgent situations example behavioral emergencies subcutaneous useful for the insulin and heparin in particular intravenous useful in emergencies for most rapid and predictable action but not too rapid administration is potentially very dangerous as high concentration reaches the heart as a bolus intrathecal specialized used by anesthetics specialized use by anesthetists anesthetists okay let's read the case history and that's all i'm be tired the health visitor is concerned about an eight month old girl who is failing to grow the child's mother tells you that she has been well apart from the recurrent nappy rash she has been well apart from a recurrent nappy rash ah nappy rash it's a pelushkova dermatit uh -huh. but on examination there are features of Cushing syndrome mm. on further inquiry inquiry on further inquiry the mother tells you that she has been applying clobetasone 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 which she had been prescribed herself for eczema uh -huh. to the baby's napkin area there is no biochemical evidence of endogenous overproduction of glucocorticosteroids the mother stops using clobetasone cream on her daughter on your advice the features of Cushing syndrome regress and growth returns to normal wow so the mother used clobetazone is an extremely potent steroid and yeah and the irritation is increased if the child is how to call napped is wrapped by this tissue by the material you know pampers uh, it is prescribed for its topical effects but can penetrate skin especially of an infant the amount prescribed that is appropriate for an adult would readily cover a large fraction of an infant's body surface area if plastic pens are used around the nappy this may increase penetration through the skin just like an occlusive dressing which is often deliberately used to increase the potency of topical steroids see chapter 50 leading to excessive absorption and systematic effects as in this case okay that was a hard hard life i hope somebody will enjoy it someday see you